girls! Welcome back to day number four of Online Holiday Bible Club. Wait. It's not day number four, is it? It's day number th three of Online Holiday Bible Club. It's only Wednesday. Oh, what a mistake to make. Anyway, I hope you had a great day yesterday learning all about King Agrippa. Remember to forward us any um, pictures of you doing crafts or any of your challenges that you have done this week to show us how you're enjoying Holiday Bible Club. It will be great to see how you're getting involved. Today, though, we are going to learn about how we can sometimes make mistakes. Just like I did there a minute ago. I thought this was day number four, but actually it's day number three. It's only Wednesday. So just like I made a mistake there, we all make mistakes in life. Sometimes they're big ones, sometimes they're little ones. And we're going to look today, a little bit later on with Jonathan, um, about a king called David who made some mistakes. And of course, as we am sure we could all guess, God knows we make mistakes and we're going to see how God dealt with that. And did he forgive him, do you think? Or did he not? We're going to find out a little bit later on with Jonathan when he's here to tell us that story. But for now, boys and girls, I'm going to leave you. And we've got Amy today again with our challenge. And I wonder what you are going to be up to today. I hope you have a fantastic Holiday Bible Club and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to our third challenge of the week. You'll notice that I have some objects in front of me tonight and I'm going to actually challenge Jonathan. Um, he's enjoying all the challenges this week, aren't you Jonathan? Oh yes. Oh sorry, yes of course I am. <laughs> so what Jonathan is going to have to do is I'm going to give him... Um, just going to give him 15 seconds actually and he is going to look at all the objects and I am going to cover them up and he is going to try to remember them. So Jonathan you're 15 seconds, you've had a few seconds extra there but the 15 seconds starts now. So we've got a rose, we've got the wee teddy bear, we've got a pen, red pen, we've got a bus, we've got scissors, we've got a can of 7up, a bookmark over there and a sharpener okay so that's the end of your 15 seconds okay. all right so we're going to cover them up oh dear we're not doing a very good job of this okay so jonathan mm -hmm. is going to have to try to remember all of the mm -hmm. items okay so are we ready jonathan i think so yes uh -huh. okay so ready Steady, go. Uh, a bus, London bus, a pair of scissors, uh -huh. sharpener, uh -huh. bookmark, uh -huh. a rose, uh -huh. a teddy bear. Yes. A, a felt tip pen. Yes. A, set a sharpener, did I? A uh -huh. Ooh, pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. Bus. Oh, did I leave anything out? Have I left something out? One thing, I think. One thing. So I've got teddy bear, sharpener, London bus, bookmark, felt tip pen. Uh, oh, it's hard. Bookmark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought this was so easy. Uh, one last thing, do you think? Yeah. Was it a pencil? Nope, no pencil. No, no pencil. Uh, it was a... Can you remember, boys and girls? I can't remember. Uh, Do you want me to give you a clue? Give me a clue. It was green. Oh, uh, what was green? Green. Green. Uh, and it had liquid inside it. Ten of lemonade. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Yo. So let's see. Okay, so we have got the tin of lemonade. I forgot that one. We have got the pen, the bus, the scissors, the sharpener, the rose, and the bookmark, and the yep. wee teddy bear. Yep. So, boys and girls, we're going to add a couple of extra um, items. Have them? Yes, please. That would be great if you could. So, rugby okay, ball. Okay, so we've got a rugby ball here. Because we know everybody in the OC loves rugby. 
And we have a rubber. A rubber. And a plastic we have cup. A plastic cup. Okay, so I'm going to give you 15 seconds, boys and girls. We're well, going to put them so they can see them try all very clearly. And have a look at them all. Okay. So make sure you have a good look at them. Okay, and now Jonathan's going to cover them up. Now make sure you get them all covered now, Jonathan. You ready? Mm hmm. Okay. I've got a few things coming out the edge. Okay, boys and girls, I want you to see if um, at home that you can remember all of the items that are underneath the tea towel. Um, now, no replay, no action replays. Don't be um, going back and trying to um, write down everything that's under the tea towel. See if you can remember them all. And again, if you can send in all of the items, then there might be a few prizes heading their way um, to you. And... Um, See if you can do any better than Jonathan because he forgot the last one. Just one though, just one. Just one. Yes, he did not too badly. So boy, uh, boys and girls, see if you can remember all those items and send them through to the Facebook page. And we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for our fourth challenge of the week. See you then. and girls. It's great that I'm able to bring the Bible story to you tonight 
We've been learning a lot about kings in the Bible. And tonight we're going to learn about a very special king called King David. I'm sure you've heard of King David because he was the king over all of Israel in the Old Testament in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, you'll find the book of the Psalms. And a lot of the Psalms in the Old Testament were written by King David because he loved to play musical instruments and to sing praise to God. Tonight we're going to hear a little bit about King David because David was somebody who loved God with all of his heart and he wanted to serve God and do what was right. But of course there were times when he made mistakes and there were times when he messed up and he did wrong things. And tonight we're going to hear about one of those occasions when David did something that was very wrong and he needed God to forgive him. As I said, David was king over all of Israel. And I can think back to some years ago when Amy and I went on holiday to London. And one of the things that we did was we went along to Buckingham Palace. And while we weren't able to get into the palace, we were able to stand at the gates and look through the bars and the railings and imagine what it must have been like to be inside the palace, to be the queen, to be in such a grand place. Well, David, being the king of Israel, must have lived in a great palace, a bit like Buckingham Palace. He would have had lots of servants and he would have had lots of soldiers. And in those days, kings went onto the battlefield. Not like kings or queens today who just simply are in their palace or go out to help and serve their country in different ways. In those days, kings went to battle with their soldiers. And of course, the Israelites, they were being threatened by their enemies who were known as the Ammonites. And the Ammonites decided they wanted to fight a battle against the people of Israel. So David sent his men to do battle with them. But David did not go to help in the battle. And that was very unusual for kings not to go in those days. David decided for whatever reason, maybe he wanted a holiday, maybe he wanted a break. But he decided to stay at home in his grand palace and to take it easy. David had plenty of time on his hands. And he went for walks at night along the roof of his palace because it was very hot during the day. But up on the roof at night it was nice and cool and it was flat and he enjoyed his walks. But one night when he was, when he was walking on the roof of the palace he saw another lady on the roof of her house who was doing the same thing. She was actually the wife of Uriah and Uriah was one of David's soldiers. So she was already married but David looked at this lady and he thought she's really nice. I wish she could be my wife. I wish that I could marry her. And he had a plan in his mind. He decided that even though she was married to Uriah, he wanted her to be his wife. And so David spent some time with her. Even though he should have been on the battlefield fighting with his men, David spent time with this other man's wife. And because he was afraid that other people would get to know about this and that he was trying to treat her like his wife, he decided he would have to get rid of Uriah. And so this is when he thought of another thing to do. He decided he would send word to his army generals, to his important men on the battlefield, and he would tell them to make sure that Uriah stood forward on the front line and that the other men would pull back so that Uriah was all by himself for a moment or two in the battle. And the army generals did exactly what their king asked. And of course, boys and girls, very sadly, when Uriah stepped out and the other men were asked by the generals to step back, Uriah was killed in the battle. And that meant that David could now marry Uriah's wife. He thought, now I can spend more time with her. And nobody will ever know. Nobody will ever know that I was trying to treat her like my wife when Uriah was alive. Because now Uriah is dead and she can be mine. That was a very wrong thing of David to think about and to do. And he let God down. And he let himself down. And you know boys and girls, sometimes we can be like David. We say that we love him and we want to serve him just like David. 
But then we allow wrong thoughts to come into our minds and then we start to do wrong things and we think that nobody will know about it. For example, we might think jealous thoughts towards another boy or girl who has a toy that we think we should have as our toy and we can get very angry and annoyed at them and maybe we can be very cheeky to them. Or perhaps our parents tell us that we're to tidy up our bedroom and we say, no, we're not going to do that. And we disobey our parents. Those are wrong things and it's what the Bible calls sin. And even though we might do wrong things and think that nobody else will know about it, God always sees and knows all things. And God could see exactly what David had done. How David had made sure that Uriah was killed. In other words, David had murdered someone. That's how serious it was. And you know, boys and girls, sometime after this had happened, there was a prophet in the land called Nathan. And a prophet in those days was someone who told other people about God's word and explained God's word to them. Because in those days, the people didn't have the written word of God. They didn't have a Bible like you and I. And so they depended upon these prophets whom God would speak to to tell the people what God's word was about. So, of course, Nathan came and he met with David. And David thought, well, that's okay. He doesn't know what I've done. But Nathan told him when he was talking to him of how he was aware because God had told him. Whenever David realised that God had noticed all that he had done and that Nathan the prophet knew everything about it, David felt very sorry and ashamed. And he realised that he needed to come to God and confess and say sorry for the wrong that he had done and ask God to forgive him and cleanse him from all of his sin and wrongdoing. The good news is, boys and girls, that even though David let God down, even though David did an awful thing, he realised his mistake and he said sorry to God. And boys and girls, that's what we need to do when we think about wrong things or do wrong things or behave in wrong ways. We've got to come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've thought about, the wrong things that I've done and said. Please forgive me. The good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, came to this earth to show us all about God's love, to tell us all about God's love. And Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary and he was raised to life again and he reigns in heaven. And he is the one in whom we can trust as our saviour and our friend. He wants each one of us to trust in him. He wants us to say sorry for the wrong things that we've done and to ask him to help us live for him from day to day, doing the right things, the things that please him. So let's just pray together and seek God's face. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for what we've learned tonight about King David. We thank you that he was a king who did good things and who loved you. But yet that didn't mean that he didn't ever make mistakes. We know that one time he did an awful thing. He saw another man's wife and he decided to treat her as his wife. And then he tried to cover all of this wrongdoing up by killing this wife's husband on the battlefield. We thank you, Lord, that he began to realise that he had made a big mistake and that he had sinned against you and that he came and asked you to forgive him. Lord, we pray that we would be like David, that when we think about and do wrong things, that we would admit that to you, that we would own up and we would say to you, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you that you're always ready and willing to forgive us when we trust in your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. God says in Romans 14 verse 11, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So, what can we learn from this memory verse? The phrase every knee will bow is found in several places in the Bible, showing how God will eventually return and that we will all be subject to him, regardless of how much power and success we gather in this life when he makes heaven and earth brand new. Even Jesus himself declared that God rules over us all. So, what, can we, what, what does it mean to be truly equal to someone else? 
We spend most of our lives comparing ourselves to others, whether it's our accomplishments, our talents, or even our faults. But as believers, we should recognize that we are all equal before God. Hi everyone. So I'm going to show you an activity to remind us that God cares about what we do, but he also cares about what is in the inside, like our thoughts and feelings. Let's start the activity. You will need some buns, an apple core, chocolate spread or jam, or something that you think would be nice to go inside your bun, some icing and sprinkles. You can either buy your buns or else you can bake them. I'm going to show you now how to quickly bake some buns. To make the buns, you will need some self-raising flour, some caster sugar, margarine, two large eggs, bun cases, and a bun tray. You will also need to preheat your oven at 180. First of all, you'll have to measure out 110 grams of margarine and 110 grams of caster sugar into your mixing bowl. Now you're going to beat the margarine and caster sugar together until it's light and fluffy. Add your eggs one at a time and beat, and then once it's mixed together, add 110 grams of self-freezing flour and mix it as well. Now put one teaspoon of bun mixture into each bun case. When the tray is full, put them in the oven for 15 minutes. When you bring your buns out of the oven, leave them to cool. Once your buns are cooled, you're going to core out the center of your bun with the apple core. Now you're going to add the filling of your choice. I'm going to use chocolate spread for mine. Once you have your bun filled, you're going to remove your piece of bun from the apple core and then place it back inside the bun. Now you're going to decorate your bun. So first of all, you'll need to put some icing on. Once you have your bun ice, then if you want, you can add some sprinkles. So here I've decorated two buns, which both look good, but now we're going to cut them and see what's on the inside. Now we've cut the buns open, we can see that this bun looks good with the chocolate spread, but this bun here doesn't look so good with the onion. The buns look the same before we cut them, but they are different in the inside. This activity reminds us that God cares about what is in the inside, such as our thoughts and feelings. So we should make sure we act in a way that God would be pleased with us. God is a great big God
pray. Dear Lord, thank you for everything we have learnt so far in Holiday Bible Club this year. Thank you for forgiving, loving us even when we make mistakes, even when we try to do the right thing. We know that you will understand if we get it wrong. We pray that you will guide us in our decisions so that we can live a more Christ-like life. We ask these things in your name. Amen.